Hello, my name is Sam Barker and we'd better get going because we've got a lot to get through. So this week we've got two sets of fixtures to catch up on. We've got the weekends and we've got the midweek games. So we're going to start off with the weekends. The big match at the weekend and the start of Arsenal's horrible run from now until the end of March was Liverpool against Arsenal. At Anfield, it was a brilliant game with Liverpool running out 5-1 winners, going 4-0 up within the first 20 minutes. The SAS strike partnership at Liverpool expanded to the SASASAS as Skirtle got two, Sterling got two, and Sturridge got one, and amazingly, Suarez didn't manage to score. The other big shock of the weekend, although not quite as exciting on the goals front, was the 0-0 draw between Norwich and Manchester City. This was the second consecutive game that City have failed to score, and it's, it's a bit of a worry for them, really. They look like they're missing Aguero quite a lot. And finally, in a brilliant game at Old Trafford, Manchester United's dismal run of form continued as they drew two all with Fulham. United were behind for a large portion of the game but struck twice to take a 2-1 lead and from there it looked like a routine victory. But Bench struck late on a header from close range to compound the misery on David Moyes. Elsewhere Newcastle suffered from a dangerous hazard as Chelsea won 3-0 courtesy of an Eden Hazard hat-trick. And Tottenham ground out a hard-fought 1-0 victory over Everton courtesy of Andrew Villas-Boas' favourite player Emmanuel Adebayor. In the Welsh derby, Swansea recorded a 3-0 victory over Cardiff. And in the north, an early red card for Wes Brown meant that Hull were able to win 2-0, courtesy of goals from their new strikers Shane Long and Nikichi Jelovic. Elsewhere, West Ham beat Aston Villa 2-0, Crystal Palace beat West Brom 3-1, and Southampton drew 2-2 with Stoke. It was a weekend relatively full of goals, and we had some pretty good ones. For me, the best goal of the weekend was Martin Skirtle's second header, the, the placement was just exquisite, to, to guide it into the top left hand corner was fantastic. But that wasn't it for the uh, Premier League fixtures this week, we've been blessed to have yet more midweek games messing up with my, my filming schedule. It's worth pointing out that Everton Crystal Palace and Manchester City Sunderland were both called off due to the bad weather, but that didn't matter, because there was one of the biggest games in the league, Arsenal against Manchester United. Arsenal came in off the back of a 5-1 defeat to Liverpool. Manchester United, the 2-2 draw with Fulham. It was going to be a cracker. It was so boring. Just an awful game. Up there with Manchester United, Chelsea earlier in the season. Up there with that England-Ukraine qualifier. I'm going to go that far. It really was dire. And it was, it was a bore draw. 0-0. Elsewhere in the midweek fixtures, the upset probably came at West Brom once again. They've managed to get points off one of the top sides, drawing one all with Chelsea. Pepe Mel's side can't seem to beat anyone in the bottom half of the table, but are consistently getting points off the top half. It's, it's, it's one way of doing it, I suppose. Liverpool threw themselves well and truly into the title mix with a 3-2 win over Fulham, a last gasp penalty from Steven Gerrard, but Suarez once again failing to score. Tottenham are also looking to break into that top four, and a 4-0 win over Newcastle will certainly have helped their chances. Poor dealings in the January transfer window have left Newcastle waving goodbye bye to any chances of Europe. I actually just made that goodbye bye joke. Elsewhere, there, there really wasn't a lot to shout about. I mean, the big story probably in the bottom half would have been the fact that West Ham won their third on the trot and are now in 10th. The Premiership looking very much like the Championships this season in the way you can get a couple of wins and fly up the table. Southampton beat Hull, Stoke and Swansea drew one all, and Cardiff and Aston Villa drew nil nil. Now the goal of the week for me was Daniel Sturridge's goal in the match against Fulham. Not necessarily because of the finish, it was a nice finish off the inside of the post, but the through ball from Steven Gerrard, outside of the foot, just defence splitting. Oh. Now as the season draws slowly to a close, we're, we're going to be constructing our, our own team of the year, as it were, and it, it's going to be done on what you guys think. So last week I asked you who you thought the best goalkeeper in the Premier League this season has been. Both Rob Schofield and Gary Benson decided that Tim Krull has been the goalkeeper of the season. Not necessarily for, for his outstanding consistency, but for that one match he had where he was just sublime. I'll link that match up here. It was against Tottenham and he was an absolute brick wall in that game. But has he been the most consistent keeper all season? No, no he has not. Now Callum Scotland also listed two goalkeepers at contrasting ends of the table, although not so contrasting now that West Ham have been on a good run. He listed West Ham's Adrian San Miguel Castillo and Arsenal's Wojciech Chesney. Now for me personally, uh, I, would, I would give it to Wojciech Chesney. I think he's been fantastic all season. He pulled off another brilliant save last night against Manchester United and kept a clean sheet. That said, Adrian, or San Miguel as his drinking buddies know him, has also been extremely good. He's coming for Uzi Askelainen, a, a really accomplished keeper in the Premier League. He's been around for years. 
And Adrian's done, done really well. West Ham have actually surprisingly kept the most amount of clean sheets out of any team in the Premier League this season with 13. So he's obviously doing something right. But I didn't feel like that was enough responses. So I then created a, a poll to, to see what you guys thought and get you guys to vote on it. So I've got the results of the poll down here in front of me. There were only uh, 14 votes, but that doesn't matter. We, we, we did sort of have a couple of winners. So the players that managed to, to only get one vote were Hugo Lloris, uh, Arta Boric, Julian Speroni, Joe Hart, Manchester City's number two, Joe Hart, Petr Cech, Alan McGregor, David Marshall, David De Gea. However, the interesting thing is that initially I voted for Simon Mignolet and then an error with the poll meant I accidentally voted for, for Wojciech Szczesny. So Szczesny accidentally came out in front, but the reality is he shouldn't have. The actual winner was Adrian with, with three votes. So going into your, your team of the year for the goalkeeper is Adrian. San Miguel Castillo. This weekend is the FA Cup, which means there is going to be no Premier League fixtures. So I'm going to ask you guys, not about the FA Cup, I want to know who's going to win the Champions League and why. So thank you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, then please subscribe, comment below, do share this video, and until next week.